morning. Today is Monday, April 16th. So I'm here early this morning because I have a couple of students coming in for extra help because I'm giving a test in my honors chemistry class. So um, because I had a couple minutes before they got here, I thought I'd show you some of the documents that I've been using in my engineering design challenge. So check it out. So here are some different documents that I've been using in my engineering design challenge to make it easier to kind of keep track of what the students are doing. So the thing that I want to show you in particular is this document right here. So this document is the research document that they first kind of use to conduct their research. And so in this engineering design challenge, um, I'm asking them to kind of elect somebody to be a team manager, and that manager is going to make a document um, copy and share this into their Google Drive folder so that I can access it. Um, I made a prototype for the students to examine. They had to identify any observations. Then they tested the um, bath bubbler. I then asked them to make a mind map. And so with the mind map, I asked that they include some criteria and constraints. I gave them some examples of mind maps, like you see here. And then I had them take a picture of their mind map and include it there. So in the steps of the engineering design process, I'm taking a look at the students first being able to identify the problem, do some research, and then ultimately identify some solutions. So this is where we get into the problem. So they had to kind of just talk about any kind of improvements, the criteria that they wanted to basically identify for their prototype, and then any constraints that are necessary. There are a few constraints that I had to impose. So, for example, we talk about how, you know, I only have limited supplies for them. So we talk about how only, you know, 40 grams of dry ingredients are permitted. They have a minimum of two formulations, but a maximum of three. And then finally, this is where we get into um, how I design my prototype. When we get down here towards the research, it's very simple, as I mentioned in my last video. So here they have to provide the identity or formula and then write its purpose in the bath bubbler. So that was used to kind of get the students started on their engineering design challenge and ultimately help them to be able to conduct research and identify the problems, the criteria, and the constraints. You forgot to add something because what? How did you realize that? It didn't dissolve. Well, is it dissolving that we're concerned about? It's really... The baking soda. Yeah, right. The bubbles. Right, the bubbles that form, and the bubbles form as a result of... Baking no soda. Baking soda. Yeah. Right, it's a reaction, Sorry. right? The documents that I have my students work with is the formulation ticket. So after they conduct their research, it's not one of these things where they can just go into the lab and start formulating. Instead, um, we have the students identify some of the things that they want to use. So for example, this is the materials list. These are all the things that I gave them to use. I did tell them that they could bring in other materials just as long as they let me know what they're bringing in and what they're using. And then finally, when we come down here, they have to have some sort of proposal, design, and evaluation. So as you might expect, this is, the again, the steps in the engineering design process where they tell me about the solution to the problem. They tell me about how they believe their solution will work. And then finally, once they make the prototype, they evaluate their prototype. Each time that they um, go into the lab and formulate their first bath bubbler, they have to... Um, fill out one of these formulation tickets and I have to give them the okay to do just that. Overall it's been um, really great for the students to take some time and think about the science going on and reflect on what they want and how they're going to go about it. And that's exactly what we want with the NGSS. We want the students to be engaging in argument from evidence and we also want them to be using scientific reasoning and so this really helps with that. <laughs> Another one that's wow. better. Hey. No, I think that's pretty good. Chemistry beast. That looks okay, I guess. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that lasts longer. Okay, so it, oh, okay, that. so let's talk about that. It lasts longer. Yeah, Look, it's still going. So why goal. do you think that is? That was your goal. Great. Yeah, so what'd you the do? The cornstarch separates the okay. reaction between the two. Awesome. Ingredients. Look at these chem beasts. Look at them. It's still going. Katie, you're such a chem Yeah, because we are chemists. I want it to overflow. Chem beasts. 
look, it's still going. And you know what? The surface area was a little half bit moon. greater because you guys put the two half moons in there instead of the whole big thing, right? Yeah, that's what we So we got to work to try and make sure it sticks together a little bit more, but yeah. that was great. We're going to see. That is so, Hi. look at that Hi. beautiful. Why is that so tough? Oh, oh, oh it's yeah. a little, it's oh, okay, that's all right. Whoa, wow! <laughs> wow, that's insane. Whoa. Look at, oh, oh. Ah! No, look at that! Oh, my God! So it works. That is crazy. Right, we just need more liquids. Then. Okay, so first of all, I think we should use a bigger beaker. But yeah, probably. Look at that. Look at how neat that is. Good job, Drew. So what do you think? I, I think we need more liquids. Let me get this together. What is cleaning that up? You think you need a little more liquid in your formulation? Yeah, and like the formulation. Or, or in the no, 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 in a bigger beaker with more water. And a bigger with more water. So look, it's, it's wow, it's still going. Look at you guys. I love it. That was really, really good. So my students are doing amazingly well with the engineering design challenge. Um, so I had a bunch of groups already today do two formulations and it's pretty incredible because what they're doing is they're taking their first formulation and they're looking at what went wrong and they're trying to basically construct an explanation for what went wrong and then change it in their next formulation. And I have some teams that are just like really getting into it. So this. This activity is very, very engaging for them, and so what I love is that they're engaging in that argument from evidence. Um, that's what we keep talking about with the NGSS, and they're actually able to use their experimental findings that they're doing with these prototypes to go back and redesign an even better prototype. So my students, some of them are already on their second one, and they're already so much better, so I am pumped. Wow. So you're timing it now? Yeah, we're just going to wait for it to stop bubbling. Okay. Very cool. Good morning. So today is Tuesday, April 17th. My students today in the honors class will be starting our unit on reaction rates. Um, we will be spending time talking about just some different types of chemical reactions and you know how they would rank them in terms of the time it takes for the reaction to proceed. Um, we'll be talking about what it is meant by rate and how it differs from time. Um, they will actually be doing a similar simulation to the students in the CP class that I was talking about last week. I do have lab with them, but um, because we have part testing later in the week, I thought I would use both periods for the sim instead of um, giving them another lab to do because frankly we just are kind of running out of time here. So so that's for the honors class. The CP class is still working on their engineering design challenge. I'll definitely be taking some more video clips of that today. Um, I would say that with the engineering design challenge the students should probably be submitting their second formulation ticket today. It's technically due today. I did put that on the rubric that I gave them. But the second formulation is due today, and then um, I'm also going to give them some example of analysis questions. For the analysis questions, the students will be asked things like, you know, what's the purpose of the cornstarch in the mixture, and, um, you know, how could you speed up the rate of the reaction? Um, I also would like the students, I think, to construct a model of what is actually occurring on the particulate level. Um, inside the bath bubbler, so we'll kind of see how that goes, but that might be a little challenging. Ultimately, those questions that I give them on the um, uh, analysis questions will be on the quiz that they will have later on this week. Okay, what do we change? Uh, we, we put more cornstarch. And why do we do that? Because it was like a filler. Okay, and, and what do Just fillers do? In this case, the filler. The okay, that's awesome. Slow down the reaction. This one is too. Yeah, so kind of guys. Do we have to make another one? Oops, no, you don't have to if you're happy with it. Can, can we make another one? Sure, but you're gonna make another one regardless. That was the criteria of making it better. We should add more. We need more liquid. Okay. Ours isn't even gonna cut out solid. Look at it. This one keeps going. Where I don't even see it. Do you guys see it? Oh, is it? Oh yeah. Look at it. But it's on the bottom. Hmm. That's interesting. So the density must have changed pretty significantly. Wow. What were your goals? Like what did you want? What did you want to do? What were you hoping to accomplish? We wanted it to be more, more dense, dense and compact. Okay. I looks like you accomplished that, right? And what else? I think we tried to get like a slower time of reaction. Well not that slow, but like about yeah. like a minute. Looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Are you timing it? Do you know how much it's But you got three of them, so very cool. It's interesting. 
Yeah, it looks a lot more compact. How did you change it to be not as like powdery, I guess? What did you do? Do you remember? Just like added more. Increased. Yeah. Increased, yeah, it was like, like corn starch. Increased. Yeah. Okay. Kind of coconut oil. Yeah, and we substituted vegetable like, oil for it. Oh, interesting. Okay, I wonder why that worked. Okay. Wow, it's really going for a while. I see it kind of moving around. Yeah, do you see it? That's great. That looks really good. Very successful. This is your second one, right? First. Oh, it's your first. Wow. I'm impressed. Okay. Hi. So I just finished my day with my chemist. It was a good day overall. The students were very engaged with finishing their prototypes for their bath fizzers. Um, they... I, I, I asked the point blank. I was like, hey guys, you know, so are you really, you know, are you enjoying this? They were like, yeah, this is very cool. And they were like, this is what science really is, you know, doing something that maybe isn't always so successful and um, trying to make it work. And so they, they really get the idea. And so I just want to emphasize that this project, again, is more about the process um, more than anything. It's um, the content, of course, is important and that ultimately helps us to understand what's going on, you know, inside a bath fizzer, for example. Um, you know, there's a, the chemical reactions, there's solution chemistry, even stoichiometry. But I think that um, it's sending a, a really important message that in science, failure is a part of the process. And at the end of the day, I think that is the most important message that I can send my students. And so I'm very happy with the progress that they've made so far. And Tomorrow, um, they will finish their final formulation. They'll answer their analysis questions, and then we'll go ahead and we will um, have a fizz off and kind of compare everybody's prototypes and vote on the best one. And then we'll kind of go from there and take our quiz. And so that'll be the end of our engineering design challenge. Um, today is Wednesday, and it's April 18th. Um, today, my students will be working on their last prototype formulation in my CP classes. Then tomorrow they have a quiz on what they've learned all throughout this engineering design challenge and then they will be performing a fizz off. So hopefully today I'll have some good video clips so that you guys can kind of check out and see how they're doing with their prototype development. My honors classes today will be focusing on factors that affect rate. I actually made a Nearpod um, to go over some of the things and I like Nearpod because it helps make their thinking visible because I can share the answers that they've written with the rest of the class but they don't know um, you know who's writing them um, so that's kind of neat unless you know I'd have to tell them but I don't tell them um, so I can kind of share like what's good about which answers and that's Nearpod N-E-A-R-P-O-D it might be a good strategy for you to try um, especially if you want to make their thinking visible there's a free version but we have the district subscription so there's a lot more features but the free version is still pretty good so anyway, here I go to start my day. It's like a moon. Oh, Whoa. that was pretty good. It's, oh. That's pretty good. That's decent. What was your goal again? It was oh. solid. solid. Make it like more fit. solid. Yeah. It's like still not solid. It's, it's not. No, it is. Okay, it's like better than yesterday. Well, you can have one more formulation, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's better than yesterday, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll celebrate the little victories here. We're gonna throw that one in there too. Uh, that's really good, actually. I think that's pretty good. I think it's great too. I think. Oh, I just finished my first class with the CP kids for the prototype development, and it was awesome. So one of the more important things I think about this um, engineering design challenge is that we want the kids to fail. Like we want them to experience failure because I think a lot of times um, kids go through a lot of their school career and don't experience that. And so the resilience that I've noticed with my students is really incredible. They're like, oh, this didn't work, so let me try that again, you know? And we've built this into our um, engineering design project as well. So they are experiencing failure, but they're not viewing it as that. They're viewing it as like a reason to try again and be successful. And so that's really kind of changed the game. So let me show you a couple of their prototypes and you can see kind of how things have changed. So here are some examples of their prototypes. So they're actually going to be running them tomorrow. We make them in these like little molds. This is a mold that we use. Um, and that kind of helps them to be able to better gauge, you know, how big their bath bubbler is going to be. So that's kind of that. I have one more class to go and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully the same result will happen. Good morning. Today is Thursday. It's April 19th. 
I'm on my way to school. It's a rainy morning. Um, today is the last day of our engineering design challenge with the CP kids, and I'm very excited. Today is the fizz off, so they're going to be showing me their best prototype that they were able to construct over the course of the last few class periods. They also will have um, a kind of like a, I guess, a lab quiz where the kids will be asked analysis type questions where basically it'll ask them, you know, um, things like, you know, what was the purpose of this ingredient and, you know, how, like, what um, told you that most likely, you know, the um, formulation that you were doing would not be a success, things like that, and so it's going to really have them a chance to just reflect on what they've learned over the course of the project. Um, I hope to, in some ways, get them to think more about the cross-cutting concepts and the science and engineering practices by doing this quiz, so it's going to be more of a reflection style quiz, but it's a lot of explanation, so that's going to mean it's a lot of fun to grade, yay! So I wasn't sure what I was doing this weekend, but now I know. Um, but that's pretty much it. The honor students are actually starting their own engineering design challenge today. Um, I am going to basically incorporate the same um, ideas that I've been kind of sharing with you. The only difference is they've done stoichiometry by now, so I'm going to also include um, the concept of stoichiometry with them defending their claims for what would make the breast prototype. So that's pretty much what's going on today. Um, I will check in with you later on. i would show you what my engineering design challenge quiz looked like so you could get a, a, like a better idea of the types of things that I assessed. So there were some really easy questions, like something like this, right? A student notices that after testing her prototype, the mixture is cloudy, why? But then there were questions that were looking at whether the students were paying attention in terms of, you know, looking at reaction rates, if they were looking at um, the solution aspect of this. So for example, you know, what's the role of water in getting the reaction started? Um, if you were to provide instructions for a consumer about how to store the bath bubbler when they aren't being used, what would they ex what would they say? You know, explain. So there were a lot of good questions with this, and I think it was very very helpful for the students to kind of get a feel for it. And then um, after they were done filling out the questions, the answers to these questions. By the way, you may ask like, why did you do it on a Google form? Whenever the students have to do any kind of explanation, I find it's a lot easier to just do it on a Google form. That way, I could just read their. You know, I don't have to worry about reading their handwriting. So I, I tend to do it on here more, it's just more easily. It kind of takes things a little bit less time to grade. So then I gave them a survey after. And so if I scroll down here, the survey, this was the most striking to me. I asked students questions like, I, l I really like doing this project. So this is out of 24 students. So 22 students agreed. I said I was able, excuse me, I felt I was able to take more control of my learning by doing this project. So 20 agreed. 23 agreed that they felt it, this project was more engaging. 19 said that they felt that they were given an appropriate amount of time for the project. 18 said I think documents are prov that were provided, the research doc, the formulation ticket, all of those were helpful. And then finally, 22 agree that they would like to learn like this again in the future. So I think this data really shows that this project was a success. Although, as I mentioned, you know, this isn't a real content rich project. It's more of a kind of a capstone project where you would learn the content and then apply it. But nonetheless, it definitely seems like the students enjoyed it. And I think that's really the most telling of everything is that here's the data. This is what they said and they answered this by themselves after they took a quiz. So I think that really says a lot. So it's about 5.40 after school on Thursday. Today's one of the days that I stayed a little bit later on. Typically I tend to stay, you know, around like 3.30 or so. Um, and then I usually go and tutor a student at, or two. But um, today I wanted to just catch up with you and tell you how it went with my CP classes with our last day of the engineering design challenge. So today the students came in and they got their prototype um, and then they filled a large beaker with warm water and they got set up to kind of do a fizz off. And so the students were basically lining up with all their different beakers and they went ahead and they all dropped their uh, bath 
uh, bubbler prototypes in at the same time. We took a look at all the different prototypes that the students developed. It was really actually very interesting to see because there were actually quite a large, I would say, array of different projects and how they came out. And then they took some time to reflect on those and um, they kind of did it like right in a Google Doc. We've got the Fizzer no, Wizard. Team no, Justin, no, no. the Randazzo no, super no, fans. I think that's my favorite team. No, the Bath Nukes yeah. or the Bath Nakes? What is it? Nukes. The Bath Nukes? We've got, okay, let me see. We've got Katie's crew, the Flopping Flamingos, and Jenna and the Splash Brothers. All right, chemists, are you ready? Are you going to do it? Are you ready? Don't do it yet. Look at this. <laughs> Wait, so what's the objective? Wait, hold on. We, okay, so as we, as we watch this, we want to look and see, right, who do you believe developed the best prototype? Him. Okay? <laughs> We're all... <laughs> well, that's it for my engineering design challenge with my CP students. It is only Thursday, so I will check in tomorrow and vlog a little bit if I have time. We're actually doing park testing here, and so... Um, I might have a little bit of time in the morning, but I'm not 100% sure because um, we'll be pretty busy getting our, our materials together and whatnot. I don't know about you, but I always get so nervous whenever I'm about to start doing any kind of testing. Um, I just always worry, you know, somebody to come in and be like, oh, you're not doing the right thing. And so I just get always very anxious and concerned, but hopefully everything will be great. Um, it usually is. We've really never had any problems. We have pretty good kids here, so it should be fine. Um, but Hopefully, um, I'll get some rest tonight, and that way I'll be well rested tomorrow. So thank you for watching all about my engineering design challenge. Like I said, I'll try and check in with you guys tomorrow, and um, yeah, it should be great. Good morning. Happy Friday. We made it. So today's going to be an easy day because we've got park testing. So I only have one class, which is awesome. So I'm pretty, pretty psyched up about that. Um, but I guess I always get so nervous with testing. I'm trying to get to school a little bit earlier today because I want to get my materials and make sure the room is set up and everything's good to go. So um, I hope to check in with you later. I have a lot of cleaning to do. I have a lot of stuff to clean up from the engineering design challenge. Um, wow, it's like really bright out. It actually feels really good. Um, so I'm going to clean that up today and I should check in with you a little bit later on. It's about 2.35 after school on Friday, and I thought one of the things that you'd be interested in is um, some of the equipment that I use in order for the students to make the bath fizzers. Um, I imagine that some of you might want to do this in your chemistry classes, so I, I I'll show you some of the stuff that I purchased. Most of this is from Amazon, and I can put links in the YouTube um, description box so you can kind of know what they are and where to purchase them. So let me show you some of the stuff that I set up for the students. This is one of the molds I purchased from Amazon. Um, this is about a golf ball size. It's pretty good for the amount of ingredients that you're limiting your students to use. So my students had a maximum of 40 grams of dry ingredients that they could use. And so this mold definitely will fit all of that. The key to using this obviously is to make sure when you open it, it actually comes in half. When you open it to fill it really high up and then really smush it together. But the kids really enjoyed it because it looked a lot more authentic. If the kids don't want to use this, I did purchase these, um, they're kind of like ice cube trays, I guess. I bought them for Bed Bath & Beyond, there, but there might be something similar on Amazon. What I like about them is that they're silicone bottom, so you can just push out the bath fizzer when it's being made. So that makes it really easy. They're also, because of the silicone bottom, the plastic, it really, when you put it in the oven, um, it's not all that heat sensitive. And especially with the bath fizzers, you're only using about a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. The other thing that I purchased for the students, for them to make their bath fizzers, is a set of um, bowls. These came from Amazon. And then the, um, I guess these are little spatulas. These also came from Amazon, very inexpensive. Again, I'll put a link down below in the comment 
um, and near the comment section for the description. And then you may wonder where these baskets came from. These baskets are all from Dollar General. These were $1 each, so very inexpensive as well. I use these for everything. I use this for my station learning. I use this for lab setup because, like I've, I've said before, I'm a teacher on a cart. So these come very, very handy just for holding handouts, for holding station signs, any of that stuff. And any lab equipment that's um, really not all that heavy, this works very, very well for. You may wonder why I have numbers on each basket. So I wanted to use these numbers to help the students to just keep track of what basket they had and also know who's cleaning up properly and who is not. So the final thing that I'll show you is that all the materials, like the chemicals, if you don't have a um, chemical supply company that you're using, like Flynn or Carolina, you can purchase all this from Amazon.com as well. So I purchased the citric acid from Amazon. I also purchased the cornstarch vegetable oil obviously you can get right from you know a shop rate you know any kind of shopping center and then um, I also have the baking soda which um, again came from one of those companies but you could also of course get this right off the shelf at a, at a shop rate or whatnot so I'm gonna head out soon um, thank you so much for watching the, my week um, again this is the two-part series for my engineering design challenge next week I'm actually doing um, an engineering design challenge with the same kind of idea but I'm changing it a little bit for my honor students I'll be sure to let you know how it goes thank you so much for watching have a great weekend